This is the fourth part of my lecture on Module 8 of the Apology, a General Science Book. <clears throat> We've discussed now assumption number one, that each layer of rock represents a period in the Earth's past. Then we looked at the second assumption made by the Uniformitarianist in building the geological column. And in order to build that geological column, they have to assume that the index fossils are accurate indicators of which time period the rock was formed. Now, if these two assumptions are correct, if they are correct, then it is very reasonable to form the first conclusion that you can construct a theoretical geological column which shows life, which shows life forms gradually getting more and more complex. If that conclusion is correct, then it's very easy to form the second conclusion that all life on this earth has one or a few common ancestors that existed a long time ago. This is the basis of the theory of evolution. Now, if you want to discuss the theory of evolution and help someone to see the problems with it, you really aren't going to get very far in that discussion if you're arguing with them conclusion one or conclusion two because those conclusions are very logical and very reasonable based on the assumptions. So what I recommend is that you change your discussion and move it towards talking about these assumptions. For example, this first assumption that each layer of rock represents a period in the Earth's history. You can talk about the fact that it doesn't need to, you don't need to have millions of years to form all these layers of rock. You see, if that assumption is removed, then the conclusion simply can't stand and start tumbling down. Likewise, if you talk about the, the second assumption and explain how these index fossils really aren't accurate indicators, they are inaccurate based on their dating method or the fact that they require that the organism is extinct, and we don't know that. Again, if that second assumption isn't there, it just can't hold up these conclusions, and they come falling down. So you see, rather than the theory of evolution being a strong wall of scientific reasoning and fact, it really is just a pile of bricks, because the assumptions that it's based on are very, very doubtful. So that was a long explanation of the uniformitarianist view of the fossil record and how that is used to form the geological column. So now let's move to the catastrophist view of how all of these layers of rock got there. Well, remember, the catastrophist view of the geological record says that there was creation week, and then sometime later, the worldwide flood, and then we have present day. Now, the actual amount of time in between those, we don't really know, but most people say, most people who hold to this view say that the present Earth is somewhere around 10,000 years old, rather than millions of years old. Now, during creation week and the worldwide flood, the catastrophist believes that there may have been local catastrophes, maybe local floods, maybe, maybe some volcanic eruptions. Definitely, from the time of the worldwide flood to present day, we know that there have been several local catastrophes. So, we can look at some of those local catastrophes to understand how the worldwide flood may have caused these layers of rock to be laid down. For example, while the uniformitarianist requires millions of years for stratified rock to be laid down, the catastrophist looks to local catastrophes like Mount St. Helens to explain how 15 feet of rock can be laid down in less than five hours, which is shown here in this picture. Another thing that the catastrophist and uniformitarianists generally disagree on 
is kind of the argument of which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which came first, a canyon or a river? Well, uniformitarianists believe that, for example, the Grand Canyon, that first was the Colorado River. And then millions and millions of years of erosion occurred until we come up and have the present day Grand Canyon. So in the uniformitarianist view of the Grand Canyon, the river happened first and then the canyon was created from the river. Now, this may have happened, but there's a very logical explanation that the catastrophists use that it could go in the opposite direction. That first the canyon formed and then the river. And this was actually shown from the eruption of Mount St. Helens that a canyon was carved out by a mudslide or, or sometimes or the catastrophists, catastrophists uses the explanation that the worldwide flood may have caused the Grand Canyon. And then after the canyon is formed, as water comes in, that is what forms the river. So this is just an important difference between the river first canyon second or the canyon first river second. And that varies between the uniformitarianist and the catastrophist, especially in explaining how the Grand Canyon came into, view, came into being. So basically, you don't need millions of years to form a canyon. So that is how the uniformitarianist, I'm sorry, that's how the catastrophist explains the geological record. And that is the end of part four of this lecture.